time on that channel, welcome. Right, it's my first fresh new video in about three weeks. It's been ages, so I won't bore you with the excuses, but I've had other stuff going on. I haven't been able to make any new videos for a while. So anyway, from today, I should be back on it as usual. So uh, I've got a bunch of new patrons to say thank you to. So I wanna say these first of all, they got priority on this video. Uh, thank you for your patience, guys. Really appreciate becoming patrons. Uh, we've got Blake Teague, Petra, oh, I'm gonna get all these names wrong. Petra Joichimia. Thank you very much, Petra. Owns Anthony Petrofessor. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anthony. Sorry about your name. Uh, John Jonathan. Uh, we got Anna Zakove, Sam Fishman, and Finbar Kinmonth Durden. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate becoming patrons. Uh, I also have patrons on this channel because a little bit of financial help really enables me to continue making videos. Just not just the cost of replacing tools and uh, just bits and bobs that wear out, but uh, just gives me a bit of incentive to actually put the effort in to make these videos because they're very time consuming, takes a lot of effort. And I do this channel instead of being a real jeweler. So yeah, a bit of financial help really does enable me to keep it going and sharing what I've learned over the previous 20 odd years being a professional jeweler. So yeah, welcome. If you wanna become a patron, that's awesome. Links in the description or to click like and subscribe, helps the channel grow or just watch and enjoy. You're welcome, whatever you wanna do. So anyway, right, this video, quite a quick, simple one. Uh, I found something online. I thought they look very useful to jewelers. So I bought some. So I'm about to test them out for the first time today. I'll show you what I'm on about now. Okay, so I saw these online a while ago. I thought, what's that? It looks useful. Uh, found out a little bit of research through engineering websites. It's an ER collar used for like milling machines. It's basically like a chuck, you know, it goes in your know, that part. Basically that for a big sort of milling machine or some sort of lathe. Don't actually really, really know. Uh, it's called ER collet. E, it's an E-type chuck, modified by a company called Re, Redo Fix, something, I might have to research that. Um, yeah, basically they, they modified it and uh, they patented it, so now we've got to call it ER Collets. So yeah, a little bit springy, but what I like about them is you've got these lines, yeah? You could, you could choose them, they did them in like three, uh, four, three, six and eight, I found. You might find even more variations of how they're made. But yeah, that's really useful because the holes in the top are all different sizes. Like these are literally all different. Um, what did I do? I think I sort those out into six. So six is quite useful because six is quite difficult to mark out where the claws go. So I'm hoping these might come in useful in the future. So I'm about to test them out now. I made a, a quick collet. I'm about to tidy it up a little bit and uh, we'll find one where it pushes in and then we'll use the slots to try and mark where the claws go. I'm suspecting that they're not super, super accurately made. I mean, these were cheap ones. These are just off Amazon. I bought all of these for like 12 pounds or something. I don't know, it wasn't a lot. Um, but that might be useful. It might be a good head start for getting the claws in a good position. So anyway, let's try them out. Okay, so I just made this collet. I just guessed the size, yeah? Because, you know, out in the, in the field, in real life, in your working experience, you're not making a collet to fit one of these just because it's convenient for marking out claws. You're making that specifically for your stone. And then you use these just, if it fits, great. If it doesn't quite fit, it might still be helpful. It's the best you can wish for. So uh, I just guessed the size of that. because more likely what it's gonna be like in a real life experience actually using them. So I'm trying to find one where it goes down as much as possible. But these collets, yeah, just so you understand, I don't know, it's quite easy for me to see because I've got it in my hand, but I don't know if it's obvious to you watching. Uh, the design is, they're made like, kind of just a big S shape. It's like joined up at the top, joined up at the bottom, joined up at the top, it's like that, sort of S in up and down the size of that. So they're a bit springy. It's like quite springy sort of steel. There is a chance uh, you can get one, it doesn't quite go in, but you can push it down. So it doesn't quite go in there, although I could totally use that. I actually imagine being able to use my saw, go straight to my saw blade, but I don't think that's gonna be sensible because the splits on those are quite wide. Anyway, got lucky with this one. It does just push down in there, so that's really ideal. Got quite lucky there. Well, I haven't done this before, literally my first time. So what I imagined when I first saw these online, I wanted to buy them, I imagined it gripping like that, and then I can just put my saw blade in, but that split is really wide. So the difference of where that moves, that's, gonna, that's a totally different claw position. So I'm just gonna try actually just putting my saw blade across there sort of doesn't look very good straight away. That one looks a bit better. Anyway, let's try it. I 
if I couldn't grip that collet in there, I would uh, just put a little dot with a marker pen or just scratch a little line on there just to get, get a bit of a head start on the claw position. Okay, let's just go around it without thinking too much and then I'll take it out and judge it. But like I said, plenty of times on my videos before, you get kind of illusions with jewelry, like you might have made a collet, the wall of that collet might be slightly thicker one side than the other, or it might be a burr or something. And you end up marking things out the way you think is totally correct. But then when you look at it from a different angle, you rotate it or whatever, it looks completely wrong again. And there are plenty, plenty of situations where I've made things wrong on purpose, just because I'm playing with illusions to get them to look right. Like you've got one side, you're trying to make something look symmetrical, but you're working with bits of metal that are, all the thicknesses are different all the way around it. Okay, let's take that out and have a look. I'm not really liking it, to be honest. I said I didn't like it, but you know what? That was first attempt, minimum effort. It's really good. <laughs> it's quite, this is gonna be really helpful. I just lined, because the gaps around there were quite thick, I just put my saw blade in the middle of that gap. And then without really thinking too much or judging one mark compared to the other, I just went around it doing that. <laughs> it's actually really good. Might not be perfect, like I was just talking about illusions and stuff. You might end up making adjustments. But wow, what a fast way to get your claws marked out. Let's try a sixer. Okay, I went through the whole pack. Most of them, most of them are eight. Uh, but looking at the sixes closely, this is the biggest hole. It's got a tiny hole in it. Not a flick knife. Um, yeah. Same collet. Oh, hmm. Okay, let's see if I can... What's the hole on the back of these? All the same. Okay, let's find a way to use this. Okay, things I was just thinking of. I mean, it's a bit springy, yeah. They do open up a little bit as well. Got one of these, it goes in. Anyway, what I just thought of, you've got something wedged in there. Doesn't have to be metal, could be wood even. That, because my collet doesn't go in that hole, it's quite small, you could put something through the middle uh, and then that helps you line things up really perfectly and just hold it in position and uh, mark it with a marker pen or something on your points. But um, looking inside it, the way it's machined out, oh, I can't show you, I don't know if you can see that. It's machined out, it looks like it's gone to a bit of a cone, but inside. So if I can cut this off there, oh, is that gonna work? No, because then I'm separating them. They'll just fall apart. Hmm. Okay, so I can't cut them. I can see if I can open up that hole with uh, some diamond burrs. Where's my diamond burrs? Where they always are, great. Okay, so I'm gonna get a pack of these. These are cheap, yeah, buy these like $10 or something, they cost nothing. Uh, I use them quite a lot. They're quite good. Sometimes I'll choose, choose a diamond burr over a normal burr with like teeth on, because you, you're like grinding. Teeth are more like cutting teeth are a bit more grippy uh, they do the job better uh, they leave a nicer finish as well they can almost leave a almost like nice polished bright finish um, but sometimes grinding is more suitable for what you're trying it's a little bit more kind it just sort of it's like just slipping and grinding away the surface uh, especially if you add a bit of wax on these uh, right let's find one see if I can grind away I don't this steel's a bit springy I imagine it's sort of softish okay decided it's not actually many in there I can use they're all a bit thin It's grinding away quite easily, look. So you can modify them. Right. Uh... <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> Gonna get me nowhere trying to get that in there. Uh, but possible, you've got a bigger one, like, 
maybe for what jewelers buy, what we normally fit in our drills, uh, you're not going to be able to open that right up to a collet, not accurately anyway, unless you're going around and around it with a smaller ball phrase. Um, but you can get those grinding, kind of same kind of grinding tools for a normal drill, uh, drill into that quite quickly and easily, I reckon. So I might look in the hardware shop to see if there's anything I can, I can buy and put in my drill and really open that up. Because uh, it'll be nice to have a guide for a six claw because uh, just that was just so quick and easy for quite a good result. I would like to be able to do that with a six claw. I think that's going to be helpful. So yeah, if you want to buy these for yourself, ER collets, just get cheap ones. These are off Amazon. Uh, I would recommend just look at the size of the holes. Like I bought a bunch of them, all different size holes. Um, yeah, just consider that size if it's going to be suitable for the kind of things you make and uh, you can choose. There was like, I saw threes might have seen fives, uh, certainly fours, sixes, eights, I think those are twelves as well. Uh, but eights is basically fours as well, you know, just divide them up. Uh, but yeah, six is quite a handy one because that's more difficult to do by eye. So I want to modify this sixer to suit me more ideally. Uh, I will perhaps make another video, we'll go to the Japanese hardware store, show you some tools they do in Japan. Uh, the hardware store is really good here, they seem to have everything that you need. Um, if you, this is just me trying to find things from other trades that are useful to me as a jeweler. Uh, otherwise, I would do an old-fashioned way. Like when I started my career, it was like pre-internet, so you literally get a, get a divider compass thing and try to work out the, <laughs> the degrees of a circle and get what you need, and then draw that out. Um, now you just Google circle divided by however many claws you want, and then get these kind of images. So I did one recently. I'm working on a seven sided stone, a bit tricky, I don't know if you can see that, I'll put a clearer picture on the screen. So yeah, recently printed that out, what I did is I get a compass and I draw a smaller circle around the centre, helps me line up, my, uh, line up my collet directly in the middle and then literally just a marker pen, fine liner pen, important tool on your jeweler's workbench, uh, just with a fine mark, just drew them out, quite easy way to do it. But it's very nice to have a metal tool to just put your metal work in, your piece in and just hold it in position and then just <laughs> carelessly go around it and mark things out perfectly. It's very convenient and especially six claws is going to be tricky so I'm going to modify this try and make it work for me a bit more suitably and uh, wow what a head start really fast easy way to mark out six claws so I'm keeping this in mind. So I leave it there thank you very much for watching if you wouldn't mind clicking like and subscribe helps the channel grow if you want to take it a step further become a patron that's really really helpful to me to continue in this channel and uh, shout out to all the Diamond Mountain members as well by the way look for a join button you become a Diamond Mountain member or there's a super chat some people do the super chat thank you very much I do appreciate all the little contributions from people it all really genuinely does help me and enables this channel to continue so yeah if not just watch enjoy and hopefully see you again on the next upload bye bye